Hey guys, what's up? D1 here. So before we begin this tutorial, I feel like I need to explain a little bit what we are going to be doing and what Cubase and machine integration means to me because it might mean different things for different people. This way, if you're not interested in learning this, you don't waste 12 minutes of your life. So for me, a perfect Cubase and machine integration means that all my MIDI is on Cubase. It also means that I can use audio tracks alongside it. It means that certain sounds or groups are rooted into Cubase audio tracks. And on those audio tracks, I can add effects, automation, etc. Integration for me also means that I'm able to select any group, select the same group of machine, press record on Cubase and record a new clip straight into Cubase without putting my machine studio on controller mode. I'm using machine studio, but this is the same for you know any kind of machine. So for me, that means a well integrated workflow. So if I show a little bit of this project, just so you guys get a better understanding. So as you can see, the machine is just playing an empty scene. All the media is over here. Triggering all the sounds from the machine. And I can you know, obviously solo the acapella, mute certain groups. And that's pretty much it. And, um, you know, for me, sequencing this way is a lot easier. I can just select a few patterns, copy them over and over, and do small little edits. For me, this makes it easier uh, to do a final composition and a final song. That's one of the reasons why I do it. You might have others. So, so yeah, I think that's basically it. If you're interested in learning how to do this, let's go straight to the tutorial. Okay, step one, right click, add instrument track, machine two, add track. Okay, I'm gonna load a really simple project just for demonstration purposes. I click on the view, set it to large. So we have some drums, some bass, some keys. Uh, the keys have two instruments in the same group. I'm gonna name this keys one and this one keys two. The bass only has one and then we have some really simple drums. Uh, let's just hear it so we know what we're working with. Okay, click the drum group, click the rooting button, then we're going to go to group, input, MIDI, and we're going to set active on, we're going to select channel 1, and we're going to transpose to C3. Oh. Okay, C3. And we leave through off. Then we go to sound. We uh, click one sound. Do Command A or Control A if you're on Windows to select all the sounds. After all the sounds are selected, you go to sound, input, MIDI, and the source. You leave it at default. Channel is going to be channel one again, and we turn it off through. Then we go to sound output, MIDI, destination. We're going to choose our host, channel one, and we don't touch the transpose. After that's done, we right click our group, group MIDI batch setup, and we do sounds to MIDI notes. Okay, now our drum group is set up. Let's do our bass group. Same thing, uh, group, input, active, channel two. We leave the root note as is, 
because this is an instrument and not a one shot group like our drums and then we go to sound on the input MIDI we're gonna set default as a source channel is gonna be channel 2 through off and we go to output MIDI the destination is gonna be the host again channel 2 again no transpose all moving on because this group has two instruments we are not gonna set the MIDI input to any channel we're gonna leave it at all we're gonna set the MIDI active everything remains the same and we go to sound we select the first sound on the MIDI input of the sound we're gonna select the source the host as a source we're gonna select channel 3 Turn off through, MIDI output, we're gonna select host, MIDI channel three, not touching the, the transpose again. Now on the next sound, we are gonna do the same. Input MIDI, source is gonna be the host, channel four, so this one is channel three, this one is channel four. Turn off through, output, destination, source uh, host i'm sorry midi channel is going to be four step two is to set up the audio routing so to do that we go to our instrument track we click this button it says activate outputs and now we need to know how many outputs we need we're going to need one for the kick another one for the snare another one for the hi-hat, tambourine, then one for the bass, one for keys one, and another one for keys two, keys one, keys two. Okay, so we have a total of eight outputs. Well, technically we need seven. So, we unselect all the sounds, select just the kick, go to sound, output, audio, destination, external one, it's External one is going to be this one, okay? Then we go to our snare, external two, our hat, external three, our tambourine, external four. Then we go to our bass, set external five, keys, keys one, external six, keys two, external seven. So now if I press play, and I go over here to this arrow, open my mixer, I have my kick right here, my snare right here. And you know, I can't control all the volumes, I can add uh, uh, VST effects and whatnot, automation, all that jazz. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna name this accordingly. Okay, so that's it for the audio routing. Everything should have its own audio channel now. This part is pretty easy. Nothing complicated about it. Step three, transferring the MIDI from machine to Cubase so we can do all the sequencing in Cubase. So I'm gonna hide my um, audio channels and I'm gonna create one, two, three, four, four MIDI tracks, okay? Add MIDI track, four, Now we go over here to, we select our drums MIDI group on Cubase. We make sure that on the MIDI tracks input routing, Cubase input routing, you have machine MIDI out. And on the output routing of Cubase, you have machine MIDI in. This is so the MIDI cycles between Cubase and machine. 
make sure your drums is on group one. If you check here, group uh, is on channel one. Our bass is on channel two. This is correct. MIDI out, MIDI in. This one is channel three. And this one is channel four. As you can see, if you go to sound, MIDI, output, MIDI, keys one, channel three, channel three, keys two is channel four, channel four. Now, let me put machine a little bit smaller. Um, view small. Okay. So I can click this MIDI button, hold it, and drag this onto my drums. It's going to create a pattern and create a bunch of MIDI tracks. I don't know why it does this, but just select them all and remove tracks. Next, we go to our bass, do the same thing. Click and hold that button, drop it. Keys one, click, hold, drop. Keys two, click, hold, drop. I'm going to hold Alt, click, drag, duplicate. Set my loop to eight bars. Now on machine, I'm going to click this button, create a new scene. So there's nothing on this scene. And I'm going to hit uh, play on Cubase. And hopefully, yeah. So as you can see, now I have all the MIDI here. Everything is still playing from machine. If I want to, I can, you know, um, let me, let's say I want to do some sort of sequence. No drums here, no bass. And we start like this. Then this comes in. Then the drums drop and the bass. And I can go ahead over here, add it a little bit. So you can move around with the MIDI. Uh, for me, this is a lot more practical to sequence than to be worried about doing everything manually. And of course, I can also enable my click on Cubase, select a track on Cubase, select the corresponding group on machine, press record. I can just record. As you can see, I'm not sure why it's triggered over here, but who cares? So there it is. Um, so that's it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and all that jazz. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.